Um, we're going to be looking at the other end, kind of at the most extreme end on that end, of sites that can be extended and, and be fairly extensive, that is, handle fairly large pieces of data efficiency and efficiently and can scale. And so those are the two we're looking at. And so we're kind of dismissing Ju uh, Joomla a little bit, not because it's a bad system. It, in fact, it has many of the attributes of, of WordPress that we like, um, in that it, it has a, a pretty simple theming system, and it's easy, much easier to make themes for Joomla than it is for Drupal. Um, it's straightforward and, and much more user-friendly than Drupal. You'll find Drupal is difficult for a new developer to use, uh, but it's not as extensive or extensible as Drupal is, and you can't do quite as much with it. it. It puts certain limits on what you can do with it. One of the nice things about Drupal is if you learn a little bit of PHP, it's easy to extend it in certain directions. It's not easy. That should, that's probably too extreme. It can be extended in certain ways once you learn enough about it, and so um, Drupal gives you a lot more opportunities to expand. It gives you uh, a little bit more room to build into. Um, so we already had a very simple system in WordPress, and so I wanted to take the other end with Drupal, and Joomla just kind of gets caught in the middle. Doesn't mean it's a bad system at all. I like it a lot. It just, uh, for what we're doing as examples, it makes sense to do those two extremes. So to give you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with both, um, I'm the vice president of a, 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 a I've been involved with a, a group called the Association of Internet Researchers for many years. And years ago, we had a Drupal install, and it was fine. But it was far more complicated than what we needed. It was it was overkill in some ways. And so we replaced it with a, a fairly simple um, uh, WordPress blog. Now, WordPress, it is a blog. I mean, like, we have entries, and, and so it makes sense to use it as a blog. But we, other, we also have other things that are more static content um, that, that tend to stick around from from year to year. And so um, we're using it that way just because it made sense to use it as a, a basic um, installation, a basic backend that meant that we didn't have to write a lot of HTML and a lot of the functions that we needed were already built in and a lot of people could go in and change data uh, that were part of the executive part of this association. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of, in the Drupal system, every member was a member of the Drupal install, and, and they had access to certain things. We simplified. This is the only people who have access to this are people on the executive committee, and really only a handful of people actually ever log in and change anything on it. But it provides a much easier way of uh, doing maintenance on the site. Um, this doesn't look immediately like a WordPress site, but it is. Uh, it doesn't look that way in part because of the way it's blocked out, because we don't have the standard kind of blog entries. Um, because it seems like it's more dynamic in some ways, uh, but it is absolutely a, a blog, a front-end blog, making use of Drupal to, I'm sorry, making use of WordPress to um, to provide the back end and to give you the starting point for it. Um, and to go even more extremely in that direction, this, if you pick this up, you probably wouldn't say, oh, that's a WordPress blog, but it is. That is, it provides the back end that, that allows you to do uh, a bit more with WordPress than you might immediately expect. In fact, as you surf around the web, there's probably lots of um, WordPress blogs that you don't realize are WordPress blogs sitting out there. All right, what about Drupal? So this is a Drupal site. You might actually, again, this is going back to sign, something that doesn't look entirely dissimilar from what you'd expect for Drupal. Um, there's a basic installation of Drupal that, that looks the same as soon as you install it and a couple of of core themes, just like there is for WordPress. And this doesn't look that far from it. In part, it's because you've got this little box here for login, which is definitely themed and looks nice, but you expect to see a login point there for, for Drupal. That's kind of one of the places you expect to see it. Um, uh, and so they've themed it, and it looks and it looks nice, but this is all backed in uh, a Drupal backing. This goes much more. This goes much more to the simple side. One of the things you expect to see in some ways on a Drupal site is that it's got lots of stuff because Drupal allows you to handle lots of stuff easily. So you often expect to see lots of boxes, but there's nothing that requires that. Um, you can have a fairly uh, simple site and have it um, work out as a as a Drupal site. All right. Um, this is your traditional university. Um, this is the point, the college level. Uh, a uh, uh, you know a, a, a school site for the entire school, and so uh, this provides people again an easy administration, a way to log in. But it looks very much like a traditional uh, site. Um, this again, you might not guess is uh, Drupal by looking at it. 
but again, it provides the back end that gives you, if you've got a lot of stuff going on, it gives you the ability to kind of organize that material and easily reassemble it and put things in various places on the site um, without having to do a lot of the basic back end development. Uh, one of the things you'll note here as well as in the others is that there's a lot of stuff layered on top. And uh, later on, we talk a little bit about the layer above CSS, which is in part bringing in media, embedded media, which is what this is, but also doing things like um, providing uh, JavaScript uh, libraries that, that give you the ability to, to show some dynamis dynamism in the interaction on the page. And finally, um, as of uh, late last year, I believe, uh, the, the whitehouse.gov site switched over to Drupal. Part of that is just because of the IT group that came in with uh, the current president, but um, part of it makes sense. If you're part of a public uh, organization, it makes sense to use um, an open source piece of software. So why is it that we're using open source? Uh, it's certainly not a requirement, and many of the companies you work for, if you work for large companies, will already have purchased into uh, a CMS system. Some of you have worked for media companies that have fairly extensive and expensive um, CMS systems already in place. When I say expensive, how much do I mean? Well, for a SharePoint uh, installation, it's not that much. The software itself might cost, depending on what you have installed, uh, you know, five or ten thousand uh, dollars. That's on top of having to have a, a working um, uh, Microsoft uh, server, right? So the the hardware and software for the server have to be set up, and then on top of that, you have to do five or ten thousand dollars for the for the, for the uh, SharePoint uh, server, and then on top of that, you need to actually develop it and, and put the content up and, and maybe uh, make it look the way you want it to look if you don't want to use the default uh, SharePoint um, view. Uh, it gets it goes that's the low end. Uh, at the high end, you might expect to pay uh, you know something like fifty thousand dollars for the basic software. Uh, and that's a license, and so you're paying it continuously. If you add in little components, um, you know, a few thousand here, a few thousand there, you're starting to talk real money. So for those of you who are going to be working um, in more freelance work or for smaller organizations, uh, open source makes a lot of sense because you can go to your client and say, you know, yes, I'm going to. It's going to cost you ten thousand dollars of my time or fifteen thousand dollars of my time to develop the site but the actual server software I'm going to be using open source software which means that other people can use it and it means that um, that we don't have to pay for it at all so it's a great benefit to you and to your clients um, if you're working freelance or to you and your employer if you're working for an organization to be able to say I can develop this on a piece of free software with a fairly large developer base that continues to be improved um, on the other hand, doing it also helps that community base. So if you're developing sites in this free software, it's likely that you will try to improve the software, and as you add things, you'll want to release them openly to the community as well. And so you, it's kind of a, a, a community good that you build on. And so um, that's another reason I'm doing it here. This is not software that you just ditch when you're done. It's not just for teaching. It's not just for learning. One of the reasons I'm doing it is that um, these are, as you can see, uh, pieces of, of software that are used uh, for uh, web content management out in the real world. Uh, I don't know offhand what the balance is between open, the use of open source and, and proprietary software for, for CMSs. I suspect this still, this may make up a majority just because it's on smaller sites, especially for large organizations, they still like to buy proprietary systems because they get to hold someone at least somewhat accountable for them, I think. Um, but I think in terms of sheer numbers, you would probably find more Drupal and WordPress, definitely more WordPress installs than, than just about any other software out there. So um, very widely used um, and something that you'll be able to use after you graduate. All right. See you next time.